Okay, so to make a release, a new release for PyRabbit, um, obviously the last one that we have is sort of like shown here on the, in this corner uh, for 8.13. So the next one is gonna be for 8.14. We don't care about the build number, this build system automatically chooses that build number. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go to pull requests and we're gonna create a new pull request and it's fairly easy. We just base is going to be master so we create a pull request from develop to the master. And it's intuitive because we have done the work in the develop. These are all the changes that we have done um, since the latest release. And then we want to merge them into master and sort of like publish those as the new releases. Um, and I hit create pull request. Uh, I usually change the title for this to something that's a little more meaningful. Um, okay, I can click now. Uh, the uh, the last one that I merged was from July of last year, and I sort of like titled it like this: very simple Pi Revit with a version in front of it. I don't think it matters uh, as far as I can remember in the build mechanism for that title of this to be, but it's kind of nice to be able to just find it easier in the list of merged pull requests later. So I do that. We don't do any descriptions and all that kind of stuff. This is going to be a Pi Revit release, and then I create a pull request. And this starts building, um, it basically creates the pull request and it starts the, uh, the an action soon. So if I go to actions now, I get this one that uh, is queued to be, to be built. I don't know why do we get two. Oh, there's one for docs and one for CI. So there are two different ones that sort of like are triggered by this to build the docs and the um, the actual release. This must be the one that's uh, newly added to build the documentation statically. Um, so it's basically just you know this is all the actions that are necessary, and it starts building the the releases. While this is building, I kind of wanted to talk about something else that it's good to know. Um, there's always this challenge of when you're merging and uh, doing a re new release to kind of figure out what are the actual list of changes that you have done. How many tickets do you close? How many other changes um, have been done that are sort of like not represented in the tickets and all that? Um, the mechanism that we have right now in the in the um, Revit in the PyRevit repo that um, it's not quite often used because um, it was mostly now that we have more contributors. I kind of wanted you guys to know that this is available. Um, if you go inside the PyRevit repo under Dev, this is all the tools that are related to the um, to the CI and sort of like the development tools that we have. So there's this command line that's called, command line tool that's called PyRevit, and it has a whole bunch of functions. And each one of them points, uh, points to a module and a function that kind of uh, handles the logic of that, that command. So you've got build labs, build products, build all that. This is the same set of commands that the build CI uses as part of the, um, the GitHub uh, sort of like workflows mechanism to kind of uh, run different things. So it runs PyRevit command with report something as part of the um, as part of the build system. So you can see all this like PyRevit run, uh, pipm run PyRevit inside of the repo. And that's how you can use the, the command line. Um, the, uh, one, of the, one of these tasks is called report change log. That's here. Or sort of like report release notes. This is the one that is uh, actually used inside of the, um, inside of the, uh, let's go back to the last one I feel like. Uh, let's see, where is the report? Report release notes here. And it dumps the release notes to a markdown file. And then this can be used later to create the, um, the tag, the sort of like uh, draft version of the tag for that release. Um, so what this command basically does is that it goes here and it runs this function that is in the changelog underscore changelog module. And it starts looking at, uh, it runs a couple of different git commands. It starts looking at all the changes, all the commits that have been done since the latest release. So it basically looks at the merge and see what is new in this. And then it starts parsing the actual command messages. So if I go to PyRevit, it starts parsing all these command messages for things that are interesting. Like for example, it finds the numbers in here and it kind of, kind of tries to determine if it's an issue or if it's a pull request that got closed and all that kind of stuff. And it starts looking at other stuff too. Like if I go back to 
let's say this is October 23, let's go back around here-ish. Um, maybe a little bit later, let's actually go, yeah, maybe a little later. Let's find the tag for 4.8.10. I feel like that was one of the good releases that I use this stuff for. So see, it says like fixes this, fixes that. It's kind of sensitive to to these things. Um, and kind of like starts uh, recognizing some of the some of the patterns in the in the messages. I'm trying to find something that sort of like shows this a little bit more. Um, let's see. Go here. Go there. Um, I can see everything. Okay, like this would be an example of this. Like for example, you can see in the message there is brackets tool listed there. And this one also has it, and this one has it, and this one has it, and this one has it, and all that, right? Or this one has the API, so it's bracket API. So it starts parsing all this information in the commit messages. And then once it figures out the numbers for the issues and PRs, it actually contacts the, the GitHub API and grabs more information about the, about the tickets. So if you go here into issues, all these issues, they, we don't have any labels on him right now, but that's primarily why I started creating all these labels to be basically be able to automatically organize um, organize some of these issues on the release draft message to kind of you know have a little bit of organization there before I start uh, modifying it myself. So like in this example, it says localization and tools and then prioritize and all that kind of stuff. So if you go to the list of labels, they're categorized uh, in two general categories. I guess two of them are more important. The green ones that are called class, you can see the bracket class in their definition, or a couple of them has it. And then these purple ones are called the subsystem, right? And I'll tell you what these are. But basically all of these have the bracket subsystem listed in there. Um, and the names for these are basically actually in the code. So we have to be able to grab those um, from there actually publish this um, a little bit better somewhere. Let me see if I can find the list of those. Well, well, we'll get there. I'll find the list of those and kind of show it to you what, what, are, what options are available. Um, but basically it pulls some of these stuff in from here. Some of those do have the bracket class. Some of them do have the bracket subsystem. Uh, and some of them might even have like formatting uh, notations in them. So this says, I'm a class. But whenever you see this and you want to put it in the uh, in the messages, format it like this: implemented issue number one, and put the title of the issue in there. So instead of saying like fixed or something else or like updated in this case, so any issue that has these tags assigned to it, these labels assigned to it, its message on the release notes will get formatted this way. So if it's a new feature, the release would say implemented a new feature, stuff like that. Um, so one of the things that I've done is this this 4.8.10 was the last release that I actually, uh, we had some of this stuff in the comments. And then after that, um, other people got more involved and I kind of forget about, forget about all of this. Uh, but like, for example, if the ticket, if the uh, issue has highlighted labels on it, that issue will get listed in here, automatically gets listed under highlights category. And then these are the these are the information that I've manually typed because you know I kind of knew about the changes that are coming, so I, um, we modify this message after the build system creates the draft, and I can add more stuff in here. But basically, you can see that all the changes have been grouped into their subsystems because they all have that subsystem tag. So if I go to telemetry, this should have the oh actually I can see the highlights. So if I highlight the word, you can see that it has the telemetry tag and um, sort of like this one has the tools tag. And if it has multiple tags, it probably gets yeah, listed multiple times on the tools and under telemetry. So it makes it a little bit easier to sort of like organize all these issues and sort of like format them in the way that we kind of want it automatically for the release message. Everything else is done automatically. And then as uh, Jean-Marc did this last time, uh, nicely, we added this attention please at the top manually the rest downloads, all that kind of stuff was uh, done automatically. We added the highlights manually and he uh, added like, you know, messages and screenshots and videos and all that kind of stuff for for these. And I think, um, I'm assuming that he has organized these 
uh, manually because I don't know if these are, oh, I guess they did have some, um, some tickets assigned to them. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Um, I'm kind of remembering it more right now. I feel like we don't have to do this anymore. This tagging inside the messages, as long as you can kind of figure out what the name of the what the number for that issue is, it can look up all that information uh, from the labels and it'll organize everything right here. Um, I think that was the old method that I had that I was using it manually for creating those messages, but this is what I sort of like upgraded later when I changed the build system. Um, so yeah, so know that that is there. As long as we kind of have the number of the ticket in there, we'll have uh, some form of an organization on the messages that are being generated. I'm going to close these two and you know, three. We're going to take a look at this. Build system seems to be doing fine. The build environment. Uh, and to talk about some of this stuff, and basically, a job set up at the top, uh, report a little bit of the context, it prints some stuff to the build um, uh, sort of like terminal here. So if, when we are looking at it, you kind of know what we're doing. And then check out the repository, check out the modules, make sure Python 3.10 is available, make sure pipm is available, make sure MS build is available, Git is available, and then it verifies all of this uh, necessary tools for the build environment. And then we got the copyright information update. So see, it runs that command. Uh, pip have run pi, uh, pi revit set and year and this command knows exactly where we have copyright messages across the um, across the source code across the repo and it goes and updates all those messages so now we get the 2024 automatically and this would be reflected in the build and then the opted certificate it imports the certificate installs it on the sort of like target machine that is actually building this uh, this is not a whip build, so that's one skipped. This is a release build. It starts building everything, but with the target of release. So all the DLLs and everything else are being built as release uh, DLLs. And then publishes the build info. This uh, sort of like, you know, sets products. And then it has sort of like you know, all those versions and all that kind of stuff that are set in different places for the build to be, um, the build to be correct. And then it builds everything. Uh, grabs the build version from uh, stuff that he has done, install version, signs all the binaries. This is where the certificate is needed. Signs, uh, but the, we probably have to make this a release thing only. And then uh, build all the installers with all the DLLs that's been signed the installers also. And it's uploading the installers right now. And it goes through other um, steps uh, through this. So uh, this is the part that we sort of like we talked about just now that it starts generating generating the release notes. And um, the ones that have their title uh, release in front of them, these are only release builds. Um, I guess we can skip uh, per the conversation that we had at the meeting. I think we can skip signing the products and signing the installers and sort of like have them for the release only. So we don't need to have the certificate for the dev builds. I'll try to apply that now um, after this to see if I can um, do that and remove the necessity to have the certificates all set up for dev builds. But that really means that uh, for the developer builds, our installers are not gonna be signed, which I kinda don't like. Um, you probably have to have a conversation about this. So like all these patches, all these developments that have been done, these installers that you can download from here, they're all signed, which is, I like that very much because it's the, in the installer with the same name and the same title kind of situation. Um, so the uh, the installers, uh, the installer in, uh, MSI installing machine in Windows kind of tracks all of these. And I feel like if you have a lot of these that are not signed, you're gonna have a little bit of like security issues with the actual fully um, public installers that are signed with PyRevit. I don't know if you're gonna run into troubles, but that kind of, Kind of makes me a little nervous because because Windows tracks this and reports all of these to uh, some place in Microsoft, and that's how it sort of like recognizes and shows that security message whenever you're trying to install something. Okay, so um, it went through all the other steps, generate the release notes, uh, it commits and tags all the changes that have been done, uh, and that's uh, sort of like not that uses uh, the Git commands, but it actually. It uses one of the pirate the pirate build commit, and internally it uses the gits, uh, the git the git command to apply um, uh, sort of like commit the changes to the develop branch, apply some tags that we use later uh, for ease of access, and then it publishes the release, 
it creates that um, tag on GitHub, uh, puts the message in there, uploads all these uh, built DLLs and all uh, installers there, and then it publishes uh, things to Choco, to Chocolatey, and at the at the end when everything's fine and everything's good, it kind of starts merging into the master. The other thing that it does is that after it merges to the master it starts notifying all the issues that he talks about. It, com- in, uh, uh, what it basically adds a message, a comment on all those issues that, hey, there's a new installer available. So if anybody's listening to those issues, issue, specific issues on the GitHub, they would see that message pop up on their, um, uh, on their thread that they're listening to. And then increment version and commit, it does this in the develop branch. It pushes develop to the next version. Uh, so we get a different build for uh, develop. And then uh, some cleanups after this, and it marks the job as complete. So this action is done. I feel like all the other ones, yeah, the CI is done. The I'm sorry, the doc CI is done. That is done. And then the pages and build development is done. We probably are going to get a new sort of like build for, actually, we don't need that for developer. We're going to probably get another one uh, very soon. So when you go to PyRevit and then you go to releases, the release is still pointing to the old ones. Uh, but there is a draft one now is available with the new build number. So it automatically generated the build number. We have the full release number, installers, all that kind of stuff. It highlighted the things you wanted to highlight, added these tools under the different categories. Seems like we had most of this stuff categorized correctly. And it has all the assets uh, in here as well. Uh, I'm not going to undraft this. I'm going to send this to Jean-Marc because he's sort of like, you know, taking over this process. Uh, for him to take a look at and review and see what's what, and then maybe uh, improve the messaging and all that kind of stuff as he sees fit. Uh, but this is basically, that's the last step. Every, it does everything automatically, except for the last uh, step that is required for one of us to kind of take a look at this, update some of the messages, make sure everything's fine. We don't really change any of these links and all. These are all, you know, uh, pretty pre-built and nicely. We can, you know, organize, reorganize, add some uh, images and videos and all that kind of stuff, but that that should be it. Um, thank you so much to all of you for, uh, supporting this project, supporting me throughout this time, um, that I've been like super busy and other stuff. Um, obviously this is incredibly important. I've not abandoned this project. Um, we still plan to do the Pyrobit 5 as soon as I can, um, uh, sort of like remove some of this, uh, extra workload that I have on the, on the, uh, Rhino side and kind of have a stable, more stable product. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon in the next meeting. Bye.